one of the most impressive pieces of AI I've seen over the last few months has got to be Google's Notebook LM and its ability to create instant podcasts. I mean, it's pretty impressive, and I'll show you what I mean. Check this out. You know, when I first heard about Project Strawberry, all those rumors, mm -hmm. I was seriously interested. Yeah. Now OpenAI has officially unveiled it as the O1 model. Right. And I got to say, even more curious now. Yeah. What can it actually do? Yeah. And that's what this whole deep dive is about today. We've got a stack of articles here mm -hmm. from tech reviews to like OpenAI's own announcements. Mm -hmm. Ready to break it all down for you. Yeah, it's definitely causing quite a stir. And you know what's really interesting is that OpenAI isn't just claiming this is another incremental update or anything. There's okay, so what you're hearing there is completely created by AI. That natural tone of those those two different voices the natural interaction between the voices, all based on a couple of uploads of files that I've given it. Google does the rest. It's super easy. It's super impressive. And I think it's going to change the way that you might kind of take on board information. Because for some people, listening to podcasts is a kind of a natural, relaxing way to learn stuff. And this is a great educational tool, or alternatively, just creating some interesting podcasts. Let me show you how it works. Okay, if we go over to Google Labs here, you'll see this notebook LM now with audio overviews. And this is the key thing. It creates an audio overview of the information that you give it completely with no prompting or anything like that. You just upload some information, some data, and it creates a kind of podcast conversation. It's really impressive. So the version I talked to you about, ironically enough, was talking about OpenAI's new O1 model, their strawberry model. And that's entirely based on the information that I gave it. So if we look here, all I did is I uploaded a link from OpenAI's main website here. I uploaded the link to Tom's guide here. I tried uploading a, a link from The Verge but The Verge have put on a little kind of anti-scraping device on their website. So you can't, it doesn't allow robots, the little internet robots to kind of read its contents. So I basically cut and paste the contents into the notepad here. Now, normally with the notepad, the great thing is having done that, all these different sources, you can then ask it questions about that information. We've seen this with other AI applications where you can just load up a load of files and ask it questions. The brilliance of this is that it can instantly create a podcast. You just press a button and I'll show you what I mean. Let's do a new one. Okay, new notebook. Okay, and as you can see here, you can load files from your Google Drive, website links. So in this case, I did three website links and then uh, I cut and paste in the text on the third one here. So in this case, I just copied the, the link here, add a website, insert it there. And then uh, up here, we can add some more sources. So again, add a website link, go for uh, Tom's guide here. And then, as I said, with The Verge, I couldn't add the link. You'll see if I add the link, it had a little exclamation mark at the link here. See here, it can't read it. Unable to import due to web page restrictions that they put on there. So all I did is basically went to the web page and then I cut and pasted in the main body of the text just to sort of show you what I quickly did. So you can do that here, add another source. And then you've got here, copy text and you put in the text here. And then I went back and just made sure I added in all the other bits of the text I hadn't copied here. So these bits here. And I just went through and I copied all the text into here, et cetera, et cetera, and then insert it. So you can add all the different kind of sources that you want here. And if you don't want the sources included, you could just untick it here, just tick the sources that you want. And then here, you've got here generate, and it instantly generates that podcast that you heard. Uh, it can take a few minutes, but the results, as I said, are pretty impressive. Let's go back to that podcast that we were listening to. So then we have to get into this whole reasoning thing because that's the buzzword, right? Mm -hmm. 
what does it actually mean in this context? It's not just about like, oh, one suddenly doing my taxes for me, right? Right. Yeah. It's much bigger than that. Previous models like GPT-40, they excelled at recognizing patterns and generating texts that sound incredibly human. Right. But O1 is designed to approach problems step by step, almost like we do using logic and deduction to actually find solutions. So instead of just giving me like a list of facts about yeah. Mars, yeah. O1 could actually strategize about building a colony there. Exactly. That's a game changer. Think of it this way. So that... Completely natural language. It's like a natural conversation and yet delivering in the information in a form that's easily digestible. I could sit back and listen. You know, my son is currently doing some homework, geography homework on the rising economy of Nigeria. So again, what you could do is you could collect different, you know, PDFs. As you say, you've got all these different things you can add. So these different sources, you've got, you know, sources from your Google Drive that you can add, Google Slides, so it will take presentations. And all these different things you can, up here, you can see here, upload sources. So it doesn't have to be from Google Drive. As I said, you can upload PDFs, uh, text documents, markdown documents, all those different types of things and collate all this information and then hit that create podcast sort of button and instantly, it was a instantly after a few minutes, takes a few minutes to render, you get a, that podcast, which you can then download in a wave format. And then you could add it to a video and then maybe add some graphics to it if you wanted and things like that. But really, really cool. In addition, of course, you can then sort of start asking uh, it questions like you would with any kind of open AI app where you can upload documents. So for instance, here we've got a summary. It gives you an instant summary. So open AI has released a new series of AI models called open AI 01 designed for complex reasoning tasks. These models are literally known as project strawberry excel at solving problems that require extended thought, such as mathematical equations and coding challenges. You get a study guide. So it's creating a study guide here. So this is ideal for if you're doing homework and stuff like that or trying to learn something. Again, this is ideal if, you, if you're studying stuff. It's asking you questions. What's the key difference in processing between OpenAI's O1 model and previous models? These are the questions and it gives you the answers. Unlike previous models that generate responses token by token, O1 employs a reasoning-based approach, carefully considering and working through a problem step by step to arrive at the solution. So there you go. I mean, a really useful tool for basically swatting up on your homework or swatting up on information that you want to kind of quickly digest to get a kind of general understanding, you know, whether it's all the background on the latest open AI, you know, model or anything else. It's really, really useful and then you can add written notes here as well to the LM notebook as well. So as I said, if you're revising or anything like that, really, really useful. But for me, the killer is the podcast creation. This conversation, it feels so natural. There's ums and ahs and there's kind of res emotional responses that reflect kind of points raised by one speaker, by the other speaker. GPT-40 could write you a beautiful poem about love because it's recognized patterns in other love poems. Right. But O1 could analyze Shakespeare's sonnets and explain the nuances of how love is portrayed in different ways. Wow. It can understand the... Wow. None of that is added. None of that is scripted by me or by prompting by me. It's all naturally produced or artificially produced by Google as part of the notebook LM application that they've got. And I think it's really, really impressive. I mean, the conversation feels so natural. Why behind the information? Okay, that's a really good way to put it. Yeah. So that's about like parroting back. They're almost overlapping. The voices are almost overlapping in a way that a natural, you know, two humans talk. It's so impressive. Not just the artifice of it, the fact that it sounds like two genuine people with great podcast voices i hasten to add having a conversation but at the same time they're imparting information in an easily digestible way as i said earlier so super super impressive really easy to use and it's available right now as i said through google labs um here notebook lm and you can just try it now and as i said now with o overviews Turn your documents 
not moving about. Turn your documents into a lively discussion. I think it's a genuinely useful tool. We get a lot of really kind of cool AI applications and they're fun to play with. But after a while, you just think, well, OK, are they that useful? This, especially in trying to kind of digest large bits of information or large facts from lots of documents, is a really cool way to do it if you want to create your own personal podcasts to learn stuff or digest lots of information really, really quickly. Because I think that conversation, that sort of podcast conversation is becoming a kind of acceptable and natural way for us to consume information. I mean, the amount of TikToks and Instagram reels and stuff and YouTube shorts of people's podcasts imparting bits of information I'd say facts, facts in inverted commas, because it depends who's talking. But you know what I mean? That that the way of delivering information is becoming, we're becoming almost naturalized that way of consuming facts and information. So what better way than to consume, you know, than to quickly understand a series of documents than having an instant podcast created which discusses those documents in a, in a way that's easy to understand. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that and how easy it is to do. I mean, I'll do you another quick example just to demonstrate. I do on another channel, I regularly do uh, uh, an update on the G, all the latest uh, GeForce Now news. This is the cloud gaming service from uh, NVIDIA. And they send me a press release uh, prior to its launch. And I was thinking, could I create a podcast from that press release? Not that I'd do that because I don't want to put sort of junky AI generated stuff on YouTube because, um, you know, you have to highlight it with YouTube. But it, just to sort of demonstrate how effective and easy it is to use this. So here is the press release. OK, I also write a script. So uh, let me upload that script, add another source uh, from my Google Docs, uh, this one. Okay, this this was from all, all last week's news. That's just two documents. Maybe I could um, add another document. Maybe somebody else has reported on this as well. But again, here, let's do a deep dive conversation. Hit generate. This may take a few minutes. No need to stick around. It does take a few minutes. So I'll pause the video and I'll tell you how long it took. Okay, so that took about two to four three minutes maybe four minutes it's hard to tell because my internet went down in the middle of it anyway let's have a listen to see what it sounds like you've got seven minutes here and it's just based on two documents one as i say which is a press release and the other which is a script that i wrote for my video based on the press release but let's see uh what they say about geforce now and its news this week hey everyone geforce now now is about to get a whole lot more interesting you're ready to hear about these upcoming game releases we're diving into a remastered zombie classic with some uh seriously deluxe upgrades mm -hmm. and see the um and the ears uh, there let's just hear that again he where well, he says with um uh zombie classic with some uh seriously deluxe upgrades mm -hmm. and a new racing game Amazing. that lets you live that you know luxury car dream life you know you know i mean it's so naturalistic i like the sound of that already and we've got two perspectives to break down the official press release and a more casual youtube video so we can see how they're selling these games to different audiences right because hype can be built in many ways so it'll be interesting to see how they're doing it exactly and you know what really caught my eye Dead Rising, the deluxe remaster. It's coming to GeForce and now W. I've got to say, I'm glad they actually put some work into this remaster. Yeah, the deluxe isn't just for show this time, huh? This is a complete overhaul. They've really gone the extra mile. We're talking like massively improved graphics. Remember how the original Dead Rising, even back when it was new, struggled with frame rates and those kind of mud. Now, it's it's adding in that, that bit of information from the press release. It, it is assuming that... Dead Rising struggled with frame rates back in the day. Let's have a quick look at the press release and you'll see. Okay, so this is a press release uh, you can hear and Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster uh, talks about it here. Returns with modern graphics, more than just a remaster. This Deluxe Remaster is a full graphical overhaul of the first game. Blah, blah, blah. Has remark fully voice supports, auto saves and all of that. So that's that was in the press release. And from this press release and my script that I originally wrote, I'll show again, I'll show you the script. 
So you see my script here it talks about Test Drive Unlimited, the game there. And here I say this isn't just a simple remaster, it's complete graphical overhaul of the original game with modern visuals, full acting and quality of life improvements. That's talking about uh, Capcom's Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. So it's taken the podcast, as it were, has taken that information and created this conversation from it. Dead Rising, the deluxe remaster, it's coming to GeForce and now W. I've got to say, I'm glad they actually put... And, and now W, yeah. Um, don't know what's quite going on there. So it's not perfect. Work into this remaster. Yeah, the deluxe isn't just for show this time, huh? This is a complete overhaul. They've really gone the extra mile. We're talking like massively improved graphics. So it's sort of riffing on the script that I wrote and the fact that in the press release, it says things have been upgraded. Let's go a bit further on, see what they're saying. Kong. The thing about Solar Crown is it's not just about racing. It's about mm -hmm. buying, collecting, customizing, basically living that luxury car lifestyle. Yeah. Now they're talking about Solar Crown racing here. Uh, they're going for a whole vibe. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like you're not just trying to win the race. You're trying to win at life in a really, really nice car. It's yeah. all about image, yeah. right? Even if it's virtual. Again, and it's riffing off. It's riffing off the... The, the, the basic description of the game. Which, honestly, that's pretty clever when you think about it. It's like, how many of us are ever going to be able to drop a million bucks on a car in real life? Probably not me. <laughs> right. True, true. But in a video game. Yeah. Hey. And See, even that laugh. Instinctive. It's so natural. It's so impressive. And this is why we do these deep dives. Mm -hmm. It's not just about reading a press release. It's about digging into what we're seeing, comparing yeah. how these companies are trying to get us hyped yeah. And then getting hyped ourselves. Right. There's something to be said about that, isn't there? Like a little bit of mystery gets the imagination going. But OK, we've got to know out of all these games coming to GeForce Now W, which one? That's annoying. GeForce Now W. One's got you ready to. But maybe it's a spelling mistake I put in anyway. Or maybe it's because it's now is written in uppercase. Clear your schedule. Oh, man, that's a tough one. Part of me is really tempted to jump back into Dead Rising. You know, see what they've done with it, how it feels with all. Now, in the press release and in my script, I don't say, oh, I can't wait to dive into this game or whatever. This is the AI deciding it wants to jump into this particular game for the purpose of this podcast. All those upgrades. But I got to be honest, Squirrel with a Gun has really got its hooks in me. Yeah, I don't there think you you're go. alone there. Squirrel what with a Gun. That game? Is it like a... A platformer, right. third-person shooter, some kind of weird open world where you're a squirrel pulling off heists. Yeah. I need answers, but also I kind of don't want to know yet, you know? It's like the less you know, the more exciting it could be. It's like those indie games that come out of nowhere, right? The ones that just grab you and surprise uh, Anyway, I am, I'm so blown away by the real naturalistic conversation that's going on here based purely on a simple press release and a YouTube video script that I wrote based on that press release, just explaining the games that are coming to GeForce Now. I mean, as I said, that's just two documents. The more documents you kind of add to it, the more rounded the conversation will be. And it is a great way, as I said, to learn and digest lots of information in a really consumable way. Anyway, let me know what you think. You can go to Google Labs, so that's sort of labs.google here, and you can just experiment on it. It wasn't available in the UK for a while, but it is now. I think it's also available in Europe. But certainly, give it a go and uh, see what you think. The downside is I can imagine people making loads of dodgy YouTube videos of podcasts and then just taking, you know, information like I did, for example, for this demonstration from various articles and then just adding some graphics over the top and then uploading it to various podcast sites. You're going to get that, which I think is unfortunate, but um, it's very convincing as a podcast. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, if you like this video, please hit the likes because I like it. YouTube likes it and it helps people like you find content just like this. And if you're new to my channel, do me the massive honor. Please hit that subscribe button, toggle that notification bell, that way you'll know when I go live with videos just like this. Talking videos just like this, why don't you check out the videos over here? These ones here. Thanks for watching.